January 2nd now. Yesterday was probably one of the most productive days I have ever had with the most number of things happening all packed into one day. <laughs> but this is just kind of a slow paced uh, going through the day, getting some stuff done. And boy did we do a lot of stuff. And a lot of people came over. And a lot of things were barbecued. <laughs> this is just kind of a slower paced uh, going through the day video. So if you're looking for quick and dirty, high paced, action packed, words and stuff, exciting vlog, um, this is it, but it's longer, so enjoy. There's actually sunlight outside today, um, and to be honest, see, sun, to be honest, this is probably like, probably the last like two days or so, this is the first time in a while that I've felt sort of like back to normal, um, whatever that means. But uh, I don't know, all, um, all new medical stuff aside, I'm actually feeling pretty good. So uh, today, there's so many projects I can work on right now. I forgot, everybody's coming over today. Um, we're gonna have a festival of doing things in the garage. So one friend's coming over, we're gonna build a bracket for uh, this one joystick for one of our soccer players chairs, I think. <laughs> I love how I just said, I feel like my brain's working normally, but I can't remember right now. Um, and then another friend's coming over with his dad. I got some Home Depot style warehouse racks from them. And we're going to cut those to shape and put them in the garage. And we're going to do two level wheelchair parking. <laughs> um, so that should be interesting. Uh, if nothing else, it'll be good for storage, but I'm going to get one of those Walker stackers or manual forklifts and uh, we will be able to save a whole lot of space in there with that. So they're basically all coming over at the same time. So I guess let's go outside real quick and I'll show you these warehouse racks and uh, we'll do a before and after, maybe a during. By the way, I realized I put a disclaimer in the last video talking about how the image quality may not be very good and how the audio was a little bit weak. Eh. And front, uh, for, uh, mid wheel drive chairs, I'm not used to having these wheels. Um, anyways, I figured out the color grading and stuff and a few of the other settings actually before I published that video. So it was actually somewhat unnecessary for me to even say all of that. <laughs> but uh, I'm really liking this new camera. It's working pretty good. The seat magically removed itself. Oh, and I can do things like this. Like say I want to lock this exposure because it's really bright out there. Um, I just go like this and then there we go. Now it looks like the face of the sun out there and you can still see this. This is the driver's seat out of the van. You can see the cut out there for the doghouse, but check it out. Whee! I just hit the button to go back to normal. Ah. Oh, we've got some interesting Oregon weather. So check it out. We've got like some nice sunny weather and then in true Portland style, storms coming. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so these are basically the things we're going to be cutting up and putting in the garage. Okay, now this thing's in the way again. The plan is going to be, we're going to put some of those racks. Yeah, I took the wide angle lens off of this thing. Um, it was causing some focusing issues. I guess I need to get a different lens that's actually compatible with this thing, blah, 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 whatever. But what we're going to do is we're going to put one of those racks kind of up here uh, so that this back half has a second area or a second height. And then depending on how wide or, I guess I could have turned on the lights in here. It would have helped a little bit, but yeah. So basically we're going to put one of those racks across here. So we've got extra storage up there and maybe another one in there. And one more basically right across here, sort of by that window area or maybe along this wall. I'll have to figure out where we're going to do that exactly, but that's sort of the tentative plan. For right now, I'm going to turn on the lights in here and 
We're gonna move around a few little things to, oh, the ramp started squeaking. <laughs> um, we're gonna move around a few little things to kind of make it easier to uh, um, do things in here, or at least try to make a little bit of space. And yeah, now that I, I know I don't have any cracked ribs, it's um, a lot easier for me just to deal with the, with the muscle pain and uh, push through it. And, you know, do uh, hot compress and, uh, you know, take ibuprofen and do stretching and all that good stuff. Um, so it was really beneficial to get that CT scan. Aside from all the other stuff, <laughs> that they came up with and um yeah i'm i'm almost done with the meds i'm on so all this extra water weight that i've been packing on um that's going to be going away soon so that'll be happy i normally lose about 12 pounds almost almost within like two or three days <laughs> anytime i stop taking those meds um so that'll be nice um I think I'll just stick these seats over by the back door for now. There's two of them in here at the moment. And I'm pretty sure all I'm gonna need is the, uh, the one passenger seat that's currently installed in the van. And that was the driver's seat I just moved. And this was that extra passenger seat that goes in the middle of the van. And kind of interesting, it's got, it's got some custom armrests mounted on it. I don't know if you can see this, but this is sort of like the, uh, the high level quad style armrest with the uh, open palm hand um, rests on it. It came with two of those. Um, and there's mounts on a couple of different seats for the van for those to go on. So those might actually be handy um, if we need to use them for one of the soccer chairs uh, or something like that. All right, well, I'm gonna continue screwing around here a little bit and then uh, I'll check in after everyone gets here and when we're doing things. Oh. So welcome to Portland. This is the kind of weather we get. If you notice right now, um, we have rain falling and it's fully sunny outside and the sky is like blue, but there's rain falling. And those are big raindrops too. So, of course the second I fire up the van and uh, I wanna look around under the hood because I haven't done that yet, it starts raining a wee bit. And the gutters clogged again. We just keep getting these torrential downpours. I mean, look out here in the street. It's like turned into a river. Although I guess this will be a good test now for the drains that they just cleaned out. Luckily this will pass in a minute or three. So it's looking like, so they scooped a whole bunch of stuff out of both of these drains. And uh, it looks like they're working. That's just a low spot in the driveway right there but there's nothing pooling up around the drains yet, so that's good. Well, I'm not going out here to turn that van off anytime soon, at least until this rain quits. <laughs> Luckily, if we look up here at the sky, we can see that it's about to pass, so it should be good. Uh, looks like our drains, so our drains are bubbling. It looks like all this water that just came down overran that one drain right there. The one that's out here too, looks like it's getting flooded as well. I guess we'll have to give this a few minutes and see how quickly it uh, drains down once uh, everything stops falling from the sky. Yeesh. Oh, I just realized I rolled down the window. Dang it. Oh, yeah. Am I gonna do it? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta put up the window. Okay, this is gonna suck. Oh wait, I'm gonna burl it.
Uh, well, I guess I'm gonna leave that running for a while now with the defroster to, uh, to uh, get that dried out. You can see the window is already starting to fog up in there. Well, that was nice. All that rain just went inside there. Sweet. Yeah, I think I'll throw, I'll throw one on the back, and yeah. then I think it'll be a good freestanding unit. Okay. Well, then I can make your other one I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got some stuff in here. Uh, we got some Home Depot style racks right here. That's going to end up having uh, like a plywood slash two by six shelf across the top, so I can stack things up there. And then same thing in here. We are going to. I'm not gonna do the wheelchairs on top. I thought about doing that at first, but I think the best thing is gonna be all the crates and everything I have once I get those sorted, to put those on top of that and this. And then I can store wheelchairs underneath. Well, there's plenty of space to get down here next to it. Decided to leave this area open over here. Um, we could potentially cut one of these down and make a narrower shelf that goes over there. It's not as deep right here, but this tool rack is bolted to the wall. So we need to have enough clearance to be able to get in there. So right now I'm gonna go through these crates and stuff that are here and transload some of that into this thing and kind of work on sorting some stuff. All of this over here, once I get it sorted down, that's gonna be about 50% of what you see right there. Uh, basically all that stuff's gonna go up on top of here and over there. And then I still have one more storage unit. That storage unit is, there's some more tools in there, toolboxes. Uh, I think I've got all the shop equipment out of there. There might be an old air compressor, but it's probably going in the trash. There's a bunch more crates like that. Um, so, I think we should be good to go. I'm going through a bunch of this stuff. Like I said, most of that's going away. I've already filled that garbage can like five times since I've gotten it. Um, yeah, we're slowly getting things taken care of, but I think having these racks in here are gonna be super awesome for keeping stuff organized. Um, I need to uh, get this workbench figured out here. I think I can get this pushed over so it, it basically just fits in here uh, by this wall. I can push that over. I think that should be good. Uh, should probably get the stuff off that shelf up there or only put things up there that are gonna be in cold storage. Because once we get the plywood on here, getting into that corner is not gonna be a thing. And, well, I mean realistically, the sea elevator on the bounder could get me up high enough to reach that. But most of this stuff up here I think is gonna be cold storage anyways. I could potentially get like a hook or something so I could grab the edge of these crates and uh, pull them out to the edge, but uh, regardless, I think for now, I just need to get rid of that storage unit. Uh, we, got, we got the big one gone, but that small one's still a thing, unfortunately. So the priority is to get that thing emptied, get everything in here, and then we can work on getting rid of stuff. Um, yeah, it's a... Like I said, this this isn't quite hoarder status. It's a bunch of stuff that I used over the years and then I've moved a lot and then I keep having to buy replacement things. So, like I said, a lot of this is going away, so it's not gonna be too big of a deal and we're gonna try and simplify everything. But I wanna see something kinda funny. I figured out a way to keep salesmen away from your door. It's easy, just fill your entire front walkway with wheelchairs. That way they can't get anywhere near your door. So the plan is right now, before it gets dark outside, um, I'm gonna go through these few little crates right here, get these things combined and thrown in the trash, and then we'll get all those chairs that are out front loaded back in here. And uh, yeah, making progress.
spent the last 90 minutes getting my bandsaw blade adjusted properly. Um, not surprising. Uh, Harbor Freight is, well, let's just say you can get it adjusted, but it takes a lot of work. There's eccentric bolts in here, and as you turn them, it adjusts these bearings in and out. But you have to hold it with a wrench here, hold it with a wrench here. But when you loosen it, it sort of changes the tension. These clamps are sort of in a track, but there's like a half an inch of play. So everything has to be held just perfectly. But I got the angle of our blade. I'm pretty close. Yeah, that's like dead on right there to the table as far as like our 90 degree um, what have you. And then as far as our blade distance this direction and this direction, uh, I'm pretty sure our gap here is the same as here. I haven't measured it, that's not nearly as critical. I don't mind if that's a little bit slanted, I can adjust this to match, but I just needed that blade to be vertical because, uh, yeah, reasons. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what the tension is you need on that, but it seems to be running good right now. And our, our rear bearings are intermittently touching so basically the blade just barely runs on the rear bearings. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that bearing right there on the top between those three nuts. Uh, it's just barely touching that. As you can see, it stops occasionally. Same on this side. So I think, I think we should be good to go. I'm gonna grab a piece of steel and do a test cut. See if it cuts straight now, and then I can finally finish this bracket. Case in point, this is the first piece of metal I attempted to cut today. As you can see, things were not exactly straight, but I think we should be good now. So I'm going to attempt to square this off here and uh, hopefully it works. The trick with these things is letting them cut under the weight of the saw and getting your spring tension on this adjustment mechanism right here just about perfect. Because the second you start pushing down on the blade, um, well, combined with it being adjusted improperly, this happens. So let's see if we can get it going. Now we're kind of asking a lot out of this little saw to cut straight for a piece that is, what is that, like four and a half, five inches tall? So uh, yeah, be interesting to see if it can do it. It should be pretty obvious how much drift we're getting. Pretty quick here. It looks like our cut is pretty straight so far. Let's let it keep going. Okay, I think we're gonna call that good. Uh, instead of using up the entire, well, it, there's an optical illusion because this blue stuff I put on here, but instead of using up the, uh, the entire blade on a test piece here, I think we should be good. If we check our depth here. Actually, I should probably check from the other side. Well, anyways, I, I, I'm pretty sure we're straight. I can't tell because this edge is already screwed up, but all right, sweet. We're gonna cut off the other half of this bracket now and we should be good. I'm gonna verify the tension of the bearings here, or at least make sure we don't have a problem with the infrared heat gun here. Let's make sure none of these bearings are getting too hot. Or at least make sure they're all pretty much equal to each other. Yeah, it looks like we're good to go. Sweet. And our blade temperature looks fine. All right, cool. I think we got this thing uh, back in alignment. Okay, got some uh, bolts in here. They're a little bit too long, but essentially our bracket's gonna come off the side of the attendant control like this, and then we're gonna mount this clamp on here to attach it to the wheelchair. So basically all I need to do right now is figure out a good spot to put this. I think I'm gonna drill several holes so we have a few different positions to put this. So I'm going to work on marking this out and figuring out where we want our holes. Then we'll drill those and we should pretty much be done. We can uh, deburr the edges, paint the thing up, and be ready to send it off and have it be used.
Okay, um, well, I think we're pretty much done. Uh, it's not the squarest thing I've ever made, but I think it should get the job done. And um, our hole here is a little bit close to the edge, but thankfully for us, it is going to be very squarely hidden underneath this attendant control. So essentially what we have here is a metal plate that goes behind this thing, and then we can attach our clamp to one of these three holes here. And uh, I hit the thing with the wire wheel so there's no sharp edges on it. So essentially this thing attaches like this, then our handlebar clamp with the single 3 8 hole on it can attach in any one of these three positions depending on where they want it mounted on the back of the wheelchair. And boom, there we go. We have an attendant control now that goes on the back of one of the soccer chairs. Man, has it been a busy day today. Uh, and yes, I'm drinking coffee at 10.30 at night. So, this is an attendant joystick that's going to go on the back of one of our soccer player's chairs. I built this bracket for it, uh, so it mounts on here. You saw that earlier. But, we have to repair this joystick now. It's got a little bit of an issue. I don't know if you can see, the uh, return spring on this it's not exactly working the way it's supposed to. And if you look down in here, it appears as though somebody used Gorilla Glue on it. Someone said that that looks a bit like me. And I'm pretty sure what's going on is this spring is missing or broken or something funky is going on there. So we're gonna pop this apart real quick. Take a look inside there. I'll probably continue this in the morning because <clears throat> it's getting late and stuff. I'm about 95% sure that the spring is just messed up and or this retaining clip is supposed to be further down. I think someone took it apart to repair it for some reason and uh, they broke this white clip. The video I did a long time ago, a long time ago, a few months ago, where I took apart a uh, joystick gimbal I think I showed in that video, it's actually pretty annoying to get that clip out of there, so. I've actually never opened up one of these attendant controls. I'm kind of curious to see what's inside here. Well, it's got an O-ring. That's kind of cool. Looks like the O-ring goes on the other side, but there's our cover. And here's the inside of it. It's ridiculously simple. We just have a gimbal, a circuit board, and an RNET cable. No display electronics or anything like that in here. So, uh, there's also no mechanical mitigation for vibration on either one of these connectors. So, uh, these things are potentially prone to those cables coming loose, like every other joystick that I've ever seen, pretty much. Okay, we'll unplug it from the, uh, from the circuit board side. Every time I take one of these apart, I always try to pull it off of there and for some reason I always wind up almost breaking it. But let's pull out these four screws that hold the gimbal in and then we can get the boot off of here and inspect the spring. So let's uh, pull this boot off here. Cram this all down in here. Oh yeah. Look at that. That is not what you want your joystick doing. Um, Wow, what exactly is going on here? Oh! Okay, so, let me see if I can show this. I think the spring's actually fine. So, normally the way these work, you have this little retaining clip here that holds the spring in, and the spring pushes down on this piece here, and that sort of rides around on this. But when you let go, that spring tension is supposed to push this back down. But as you can see when you turn, this part is not sliding back down. You can push it back down with a screwdriver. So, it looks like some glue may have made its way into this little slip collar because this part here has to slide on this shaft. And if you notice, there's a bunch of goop there. So, when we go to move it, 
See how it mashes up into the glue? And the glue is doing its job very well, thus not letting it slide anywhere. So, ugh. Yeah, and it's also like affecting the spring and everything. So let's see if we can get this all off of here. And then, uh, reattach all this. Well, we're gonna clean up that shaft. We'll get all this glue off of here. And then, uh, hopefully find a way to retain this clip without using glue and uh, put it all back together. Now, like I said a minute ago, this is an extremely annoying part to remove. I'm not sure why they put this glue on here, to be honest. The clip seems like it's fine. Uh, well, give me a minute. Uh, it's gonna take a lot of screwing around to get this off of here. Actually, I'm gonna try and clean this glue out of here first and uh, see if maybe we can't do this without taking it apart. Because even though there is glue in here, it looks like our part is actually attached the way it should be. So, I'm gonna try and clean this up. I'll be right back. Yeah, so check it out. You can see, if it's not blurry, focus, focus, there we go. Um, right here, we've got a little piece of that glue, and that is getting up underneath the shaft. There, see? Now it's working like it should. We didn't even have to take it all the way apart. All we need to do is remove all these, all these little bits of glue that were in here, and uh, I think we're good. All right, I'm gonna clean up the rest of the stuff on this spring here. And then I got some silicone aerosol lubricant I'm gonna spray down on this little plastic housing here. And there we go, now the camera's focusing. By the way, this is the broken camera I'm using. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever, but. So I'm gonna finish cleaning this up and uh, we're gonna spray some silicone lube down in there. And I think we should be able to get away with not actually taking this all the way apart, which would be nice. I'm going through all my stuff and cleaning things. I came across this little miniature, like, hobby hacksaw thing. I actually remember when I bought this. It was one of the, well, I don't remember exactly what the situation was, but it was one of those side of the road repair jobs where I needed a hacksaw and there were no stores open except for, it was like a craft store, or, there was something weird, but all they had was this, so I had to use this itty bitty hacksaw for something it wasn't intended for. But anyways, I'm just gonna use it right now to trim some of this glue off of here because I think the clip is actually fine. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that they were attempting to glue the rubber boot on here because there's no signs of this thing ever having been taken apart. And everything looks fine in here. Okay, I think we should be good. Actually, I don't even need to put any silicone lube in here. Well, I don't need to, but I think I'm going to anyways. Just because, even though we cleaned all the stuff out of there, who knows what the chemicals actually did. It's not gonna take very much at all. Here we go, silicone spray. It's actually really difficult to spray the tiny amount that I need here, but I'm gonna try. Oh, okay, that was way too much. Oh, I reactivated the glue. Okay, so Gorilla Glue activates with chemicals and stuff. So spraying that in there, I believe, reactivated our glue. Um, yeah, now it's sticking again. <laughs> I'm gonna take this completely apart now, since uh, we're kind of back to square one. Yeah, I'm gonna take it all apart and clean it properly. I'll be back. Can't believe the propellant and that silicone spray reactivated the glue. <laughs> That's funny. Um, to get those things off, I use a series of hooks and picks. It's not very pretty and uh, well, let's just say you don't need to be doing that. You'll poke a hole in your finger. So let's pull this piece off of here. Oh yeah, that thing is grimy. That really needed to come off of here and get cleaned proper. Oh yeah, look, did you see how there's fibers of the, fibers of the towel getting stuck on this? Gorilla Glue is some serious filth. 
I found the problem. So right here, there's a little bit of scale of this glue. And this is on the shaft where this piece has to be able to slide up and down. And this is all it takes, right here. See this little like sliver or skin of glue? That's all it took for this thing to not work properly. And you really don't want these things to be malfunctioning because if you push forward, you want it to return to center. You, you want it to return to center, especially if it's a ten, an attendant control. Um, you don't need this thing sticking because the chair would just keep going. That wouldn't trigger any sort of errors in the system. The chair would just take off at full speed and uh, yeah, that'd be no good. Yeah, there's a, yeah, see that? There's a bunch of garbage in here. That's all glue. So this is what happens when you buy things off of eBay sometimes. You end up with uh, interesting problems. Yeah, you can see all that garbage in there. Gross! I found another use for straws. It's a perfect cleaning rod for this thing, with the paper wrapper on there. <laughs> okay, this thing should be... I still got a little bit of friction there, what is that? Oh, a little bit more glue, I missed a spot. There we go, nice and smooth. All right, let's put this thing back together. So we put this part in here first. This is what rides around on this black circle here. Make sure everything's good. It's freely moving, doesn't catch anywhere or on anything. Then our spring goes on next. Then the clock rings. Then our little retainer clip goes back on here. And it's going to snap around this little detent right here, or this groove that's cut in there. Yep. There we go. And then this will just snap into place once it gets down there. There we go. Spring pushes up, holds that in place. Just twist this around, make sure it's actually seated in there. Looks like we're good to go. Oh yeah, that's nice and firm. This thing actually works like it should now. I'm glad I took it apart and cleaned it the rest of the way. I, I get to thinking too, it's like, you don't want to screw around with these, you don't need them sticking. It's got a lot more back pressure now. Like, even before when it was working properly, it still didn't have that much force, so. Yeah, I think we're good. I don't know, oh. I think they tried to glue on this drawer pull as the knob for this, and that's probably how the glue got down in there. I was trying to figure out why there was Gorilla Glue all over this. I thought, well, maybe they were trying to glue this on, or maybe they took it apart and that broke. No, much more simple. We're trying to attach bathroom hardware to this thing as a joystick. So we're not going to use that. That's not designed for this. And it screwed it all up. So, um, yeah, now that all the glue's not on here, this just goes back together. Like, no big deal. Oh, apparently that circuit board just pops out of there. Put that back in the right spot. Uh, in case you're wondering, these little LEDs that are visible through the front of this, and this little board, looks like, yeah, it's got conformal coating on most of it. Yeah, there's, a, there's conformal coating on most of this board, so it's somewhat weather resistant. And it does actually have an O-ring. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Let's stick this back in here. Then our gimbal, which now works perfectly, will push right down in here. Obviously you wanna make sure it's in the same orientation. All right. There we go, all screwed in. Plug in our electrical connector here. Like a little Lego. And then our O-ring stuck to this outer housing. I'm going to transfer that over to the inner housing because if you notice here, this edge is completely flat. But if we look at this, 
there's a little bit of a recess here that it can go into. So if we left it stuck to this and put it back on there, there's a very high likelihood that it would go in the wrong spot and then it would get pinched or broken or something like that. So we're just gonna lay this in here since there's actually a spot for it. There we go. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see it's in there. I need to get some more lighting out here. Moral of the story, don't pour glue in your joystick, kids. Just because I'm weird, my mind goes to the situation or the events that led up to the glue being put in this. They were probably like, oh crap, we lost the top of the joystick knob because that happens quite a bit, especially with attendant controls because someone's walking behind the chair and they're pushing all their body weight on this and the thing just slips right off of there. So they're probably trying to find something else to put on there and they're like, oh hey, there's this thing that I ripped off the closet door in the bathroom. It seems to sort of fit on there. It's kind of loose. Let's use some Gorilla Glue. So they put the Gorilla Glue in there. The next part makes me wonder. How soon did it quit working and what was the thought process? And then how did it end up on eBay? Did the people get a replacement on their own? Did the insurance company replace it and this was sold by the technician? Or did they sell it? I just, I just wonder about things like that. But anyways, as you can see now, this thing is solid. We are good to go. I'm confident to send this thing out into the world and let people use it and they won't have fear of hitting a bump or having it get stuck or anything like that. All right, time to go to bed or at least watch some TV or go to bed and watch TV while I'm in bed. Oh.